May God bless you all. Today we're going to continue our sharing on the pastoral presence by talking about presence and the carer's response to the person cared for. Now the first two dimensions of pastoral presence are the person of the carer and the more than the person himself or herself that the carer represents. Now, concerning the third dimension of presence is in the response that the carer offers to the person or persons for whom she cares. The carer is present by the way she responds to other. That response can be described most usefully in terms of listening, how one listens and what one listens for. Listening, as we will see later on, is not just a matter of using one's ears and hearing words. It is a total response to the way that the carer is experiencing the other. A useful reminder of this can be found in the Synoptic Gospels. The first three Gospels consistently emphasize the importance of listening and getting the message. The, constant, the contrast these Gospels make between those who hear and those who do not offers a powerful challenge for the pastoral carer. A particularly helpful example is found in Luke 8.18, which the new Revised Standard Version translates it as Pay attention to how you listen. The Greek word literally means see how you listen. It denotes sense perception or being able to see as distinct from blindness and it calls for all the senses to be used for full awareness of the message being conveyed. The text challenges the pastoral carer to be careful in the way that she listens and remembers what she or he hears. Just as seeing how we listen involves bringing together two senses, sight and hearing. How we listen needs to involve at least two things. Pastoral presence, that is being with the person where he is, requires first of all listening carefully to what the patient or parishioner tells the pastors about his present situation, the condition of his illness, his family, loss of a job or significant person in his life. The pastor listens to understand as much as he can about immediate challenge to this person's life. One might think of this as the up-close view of the person's present life. Now pastoral, experience, pastoral presence also requires a second type of listening, usually a somewhat more active one that attempts to place the present situation within the context of the person's whole life. The pastor can be most helpful when he or she goes into a pastoral visit with the assumption that the patient or parishioner has the task of putting the immediate crisis within the picture of his whole life. What does this illness or loss mean for what happens in the rest of his life? The patient obviously may be looking for a specific religious meaning, or he may not. Implicit in the situation, however, there is the question, where do we go from here? And this may be a very practical or a very philosophical question. It may be both. The pastor's task is to listen for it in the midst of all that is discussed in the pastoral call and to consider whether or not this is the best time for the pastor to raise the larger question 
for what this situation may mean for this person's life. Now, the emphasis here is on what might be called bifocal listening, that is, attending to the immediate situation, but listening for the opportunity to consider larger issues in the patient or parishioner's life. And as has been stated, and as we will be affirmed a number of times later on, a pastor is not called to care for persons by solving their problems. He or she is called to recognize and communicate, even in the most difficult circumstances, that a person is more than the problem he presents. He or she is not just a medical or psychological diagnosis. A couple struggling to stay in a painful marriage or a lonely or demoralized person. Those for whom the pastor cares are persons created for relationship with God and God's creation. The pastor may contribute the solution of the person's problem, but the pastoral care offered is not the guidance given, but the relationship provided and the restoring of soul that can result from that. Rediscovering oneself and one's power to live and to change in the context of relationship is what pastoral care is all about. Care is pastoral when it looks deeper than the immediate circumstance of a person's life and reminds that person that he or she is a child of God created in and for relationship. Therefore, pastoral presence is expressed through this kind of bifocal listening, but there is another way as well. One can make a strong case that the Bible speaks about God and, about, and also about the human situation in a more than one way. There is a strong voice and a quiet voice, a majority message, and a voice from the minority as well. An Old Testament theologian, Walter Brueggemann, has argued that the Bible is filled with both testimony and counter-testimony, a voice of faith and a voice that challenges that faith. This is a voice that speaks in theological language and one that is presented in the more secular voice of practical ethics. And uh, such as in the book of Proverbs, there is a counter testimony in the challenge, questioning voice of Job and the skeptic and in the skeptical, often cynical voice of the writer of Ecclesiastes. In the Psalms, there are strong expressions of both testimony and counter testimony, words of faith, and those of anger, pain, and doubt. The voices in the New Testament are more unified in their testimony to Jesus as the Christ, but even here there is sometimes a minority voice of questioning and doubt. It may be heard in the doubt of the disciple Thomas, or in the not knowing voice that one sees occasionally in the Apostle Paul, when even this man of faith wonders who has known the mind of God. Who has known the mind of the Lord? So, Lord, we thank you for today's sharing. We ask you, God, that in Jesus' name, in Jesus' blood and the Holy Spirit, you help us as chaplains to recognize both voices, that we recognize the voice that is testimony, and also the voice that it counter testimony, because both voices come from a common search, a search for the truth. Help us, God, to be in truth. May God bless you.